Hey guys, in this video I'm going to answer a question that was put to me. Somebody from outside of North America who's interested in the U.S. market, they're experienced in IT, but they want to go freelancing because they understand the freedom, the personal freedom, and the financial freedom that you can get if you get into freelancing. So I'm going to read part of the email, give you my answer along the way. So he says, recently occurred to me that I would like to have more freedom in my life and freelance or maybe a personal business is looking very appealing to me now. By the way, following your channel greatly inspired me. So I am considering either providing web development services to people or maybe web scraping services from the start. Local market is not looking very appealing to me since there is a big difference between developer hourly, hourly rates in our country and for example, the US market. So I'm looking for advice from you on how I can approach foreign markets as a freelance developer from Eastern Europe. I spent a few years working in an outsourcing company, so I am used to US companies and customers. That's a big plus. When we finish this, I'll give you my comments. My English level is decent and I can communicate freely, so I expect to have, I ex so I expect some to have some prejudice from foreign employers but maybe I am wrong. Thanks in advance. Thanks in advance. Wish you all the best. Let me just give you a bit of background. For about eight years, I've been professionally working in the IT industry in local companies. I don't have a computer science degree, but I still was able to get in and work in various roles, including manual and automated testing, team leading, uh, tech lead, and as a project manager as a result of all the efforts. Something I point out all the time, experience is more important than anything else. Yes, I do sell and provide certifications, proper certifications where you get tested and it's random questions, all this stuff. And I do provide this to schools. That being said, I still say that those certifications are cool to start establishing uh, your foundational uh, reputation you got to build your reputation and whatever you do in life. Experience, real world experience is much more important, much more important. Anyway, so he wants to know uh, how he can approach foreign markets as a freelance developer from Eastern Europe. In a nutshell, it's the same thing uh, if you were in the local market, if you were already in the US or Canada or something, what you need to do is establish great reputation. And you do this by first having a great site, having some real world work that you can showcase. Certification, certifications can help a bit. It's kind of icing on the cake, if you will. But real, real world experience is where it's at. You have to be sure that you are fluent are fairly fluent in the language and in the customs of a market in which you want to address. So if you want to get into the US market, you should be able to speak and write English very well. You should understand the uh, local psychology and the local customs as well. It's very important that uh, your clients and your prospective clients can relate to you and that you can relate to them and this will, uh, increases, will increase your chance, your chances of landing any contracts by a great deal if you do that. Of course, you need to have technical skills as well. So again, just like you have to understand the local uh, personality of the market you're going after, uh, how people think and talk and so forth, you also have to understand what's in demand. Now, in your country, what may be in demand could be csharp.net, but you may be targeting a market where the demand is Python and Django or PHP Laravel or Java, who knows, depending on the market. So there's, there's a strategy involved in going after uh, foreign markets, but first and foremost, make sure you, your language and communication skills are top notch. Second, make sure that you have uh, the tech skills that are in demand in the market that you're looking to get into. And then you have to show both. Now, the first thing you do is set up a good looking website, put up links and examples of the real world projects that you built, start building a bit of a social media presence. Um, LinkedIn is a great place, especially for business. 
Uh, Instagram, not so much if you want to be a developer or, or a service provider. It's more about LinkedIn, uh, maybe Twitter, uh, maybe some YouTube videos, but LinkedIn is a place to go. Again, it's about building reputation and trust. As I say in all my videos, uh, after you know your foundations and you're comfortable building uh, basic websites and maybe some basic CRUD apps, you're much better off developing good uh, communication skills, written and verbal. You're much better off building some reputation than learning some new framework or some other language. So there you go. I hope that answers that question. I, uh, I occasionally answer questions put to me from YouTube, although it's uh, very difficult for me because uh, time is limited. All right. I hope you found this useful. Bye-bye. You know what? Here's a first little tip about communication on the web. I'm going through my emails. Long, big, huge paragraphs are not going to win you any friends, especially if you're sending out emails to people who don't know you. So you want to keep your emails short and to the point. Paragraphs, two, three sentences, a couple bullet points, another two, three, par two, three sentence paragraphs. Don't have very long stories. Sometimes people send me these huge, these huge stories big chunky paragraphs you know it don't do it I, I have so many emails and so many communications to go through that the ones who get my attention are the ones who give me a short sentence that's easy to read and tells me the point of the email don't go on and on and on and on for 10 hours I'm not gonna I'm not gonna read it most people won't read it just cuz not cuz they don't care about you it's cuz it's so busy you got so much to read. So that's the first point. So for example, somebody, some startup wanted me to um, help them with their app in some way. Uh, I still can't figure out what they want. It was like email after email and it was a friend of a friend. So I gave them a little bit more uh, latitude than I would normally. But after like six, seven emails back and forth, I still don't understand what they want. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. And now they want to schedule a meeting with me. It's, I'm not going to do a meeting. I can, I can barely understand you. You should be able to pitch your idea, convey your message with like one paragraph, maybe two, some bullet points. All right, little little tip for you in terms of uh, communications. All right, bye-bye.